Moti, I, I, I want to, to phrase a little bit uh, to sharpen. I asked you before to talk about uh, the issues of CO uh, burning and CO2 and the US. We are all of you, you talked before, and uh, I would like you to deal more about that. But we'll have to add additional point that uh, maybe all of you will address. We are talking, what type of transportation do we talk in the 50 years from now? Do you see the private cars, everyone has his own car, driving everywhere? You started talking about that, and I would like you to have your idea. I, I, I must say, I mean, I'm, I'll, I'll try to be a bit cautious about this one, you know, since this is being recorded here. Um, See, I was involved with a consortium of uh, auto companies in the mid-90s when they were very seriously discussing fuel cells, and they were very, very serious about it. And also energy companies were involved as well. And the prediction at that time, unequivocally, was that in about 10 years, we're going to see fuel cells because they're very efficient, they're very good, and so there's no question about it. And if you look today, which is 20 years later, I don't think you really have much in that way, you know, although still, uh, there, there is a hope that this is going to happen now. In terms of transportation, there was a, a panel here discussing that this morning of experts, and I think that they probably are in a much better position than certainly I am to make such predictions. So what I would like to, to point out are several things which really worry me a great deal, you see. People use terms that have nothing to do with the reality, which means natural gas is green, uh, Biofuels are 100% environmentally viable, which means that you 100% recycle CO2 through biomass, all kinds of terms which are so far from reality. I mean, so we have to, I mean, they try to penetrate the market very fast, which is good. And there is a business community out there that you know would like to promote this, which is excellent. And natural gas is great, and biofuels are great, everything is valid. However, we should say things the way they are, and the way they are, actually, is that if I talk about biomass, and we ourselves have been involved, are still involved in this biomass, uh, you know, in the biofuels, but, it, but there are so many reports these days that really show that um, there is a problem. It doesn't mean that we should stop working on it, but there is a problem. The environmental problem is still there. It, it, there. There is a real question whether you, you still, in terms of uh, greenhouse gas, there is any impact there at all. There maybe if there is any, there is very small. There are questions about the land and the viability of this altogether, the food, the whole bit. Uh, so I'd like to come back to you, Professor Prakash, and say, I mean, for one thing, we should do the life cycle analysis of these things and should talk in real terms, okay, so that we all understand what we're talking about. This is, this is very important, so at least we understand what we're talking about, and about sustainability of this. So I guess, ultimately, we have to find a way first to use this, the, 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 the solar energy. This is the real energy coupled with the wind and the others, which is, which, which is related. And then if we are able to do that, we probably will also be able to deal with the fuels because about the CO2 situation, okay, will need to be resolved. I don't know how fast will need to be resolved. And by the way, there are many technologies on the CO2. We presented one. There was another, there was another great technology presented here just now. There are other technologies that are trying to decompose CO2 electrochemically. So there are many out there. And the question is which one is more viable, economical, being able to scale it up. But we have at least, as far as the government the concern, is concerned, and the, and the foundations, we have to find a way, although we cannot predict the future. But I think in this, in this conference right here, in this summit, it became quite clear that we cannot keep doing things the way uh, we are doing now. The fact is that short term, we can use natural gas and all the others, but if we look a bit more down the road, we have to deal with the CO2 problem and other problems related to the environment 
and the sustainability of this market altogether, independent of which means of transportation are so there and about the batteries. There is a real question about the materials. You pointed this out. And, you know, it's not clear yet. You know, I don't think it's clear whether, even if you have those breakthroughs, whether we'll be able to have something sustainable out there that will be able to really replace the kind of fuels that we're using today. 